Hi, and welcome to a special edition of Newsmakers. I'm your host, Jerry Roberts. We recorded this program on election night, November 3rd, to provide you with a glimpse of the anticipation and excitement surrounding Santa Barbara's first district election campaigns for city council seats in decades. Right now, we're at City Hall, where the last minute ballots are coming in, and where candidates, strategists, campaign workers, journalists, and other citizens are gathering to watch the results come in. Let's see what's going on. talking with Irma Nzweta in the lobby of City Hall, and she is the election inspector. She's been sitting here since 7 a.m. this morning. And uh, what's been going on? People bringing in their last minute ballots? People have been bringing in ballots since this morning. Um, we've uh, received approximately 158 ballots th since 7 o'clock. And these will be counted late tonight? My understanding, yes. Yeah. Yeah, now you've been sitting here since 7 o'clock. Have you had a chance to get anything to eat? Did they bring you pizza or anything? We did have an opportunity to have a lunch hour, and um, we also have an opportunity to go and have dinner downstairs. Did they cater something? They bring uh, something yes, nice? They did. From where, where? From where? You well, know? you know, I thought I saw Stanton's. But I've never had. What'd you have? To, what'd you I have? haven't. I haven't. Oh, we haven't yet. gone down. No. Um, we have to verify the signatures downstairs. We'll be bringing them upstairs to the precinct boards, and that's when the ballot inspection board will start doing their magic. So you're going to see them sitting here for a while, um, but that's because we haven't gotten the ballots yet from the actual uh, drop-off center. Um, so you know, it's you guys don't have to sit here quietly all night <laughs> because uh, there's going to be a lot of time where we're going to be waiting. Um, but we will start counting them as the precincts come in and get processed, then we will start counting them. And we'll be releasing uh, more numbers. The tally board will be updating the numbers on the screen, and so they will be updated throughout the night. But you'll know because you'll hear that tick, tick, tick of this machine, and you'll know that something's happened and that the numbers will be updated. So, once again, thank you for coming and welcome. And <laughs> All right, we're talking to uh, Paul Wellman now, the staff photographer for the uh, Santa Barbara Independent. What are you doing tonight? What do you? What, what, what's your mission? Whatever I can. Uh, you election night's always a wild card. You don't know where you're going to be. Uh, this is a good starting point here at City Hall. You hope that everyone shows up, and uh, so you can get a bunch of shots in at once. But inevitably, some people don't show, uh, so they all break off into their camps and. The, the fun part of election night is you don't know how things are going to play out. So you want to be with the people, win, lose, or draw. You want photos of everyone. Are you, going to, are you going to parties afterwards? Going to parties afterwards. Uh, and, and again, it's all it's a matter of timing. You know, the people that don't do so well uh, don't stick around to party too long. So is that a better <laughs> shot than the people who won? You never know. Sometimes you get it right off the bat, your best shot's right away. And sometimes uh, you, you wait all night for someone to do something expressive and they, and they, they never crack a smile or, or make any any face at all so and we're asking everybody about what they're eating on election night so i understand that the independent did not spring for pizza tonight they, but you have leftover pizza they, from this they sprang afternoon. from this afternoon so yeah so it's ready to go so cold pizza delicious for the independent delicious staff. cold pizza <laughs> all right thanks a lot packed with vitamins <laughs> And now we're talking to Nick Welsh, the uh, Santa Barbara uh, independent columnist and the hardest working man in show business. Uh, what are you doing tonight? How long do you have to be out? I think we should know by 9.30. Yeah, we're going to know everything by 9.30. I think everything there is to be known will be known, will be revealed by 9.30. And uh, the first, I said 8 o'clock, we should get all the votes that have been cast up to now to 4 o'clock uh, today. Uh, then after that, around 9.30, we should get everything else. Um, except for, and this is a big wrinkle, where we won't know everything. Um, all the votes that have been are postmarked November 3rd will be counted between now and Friday. And then they will be revealed unto us on Monday uh, because City Hall is closed on Friday. And if that number is sufficiently large and the races are sufficiently close, like the first district, we may not know who won. 
All right, please diagram that sentence. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, are you gonna? Are you writing tonight, or what do you? What do you? I do? haven't made up my mind. Um, I, I cleared the text so I can come in early in the morning, but we're gonna have to get something posted so we can kick News Hawk's ass. Okay. Well, thank you very much, <laughs> Nick Welsh. We'll catch up with you later. Okay. We're with Bendy White, City Councilman. I just wanted to ask you, regardless of who wins and loses tonight. How concerned are you that we're going to lose a perspective for the overall city, that the interests are going to become too parochial? That, that is the, I think that's the biggest question that I'm concerned about. It, it really is, uh, are we going to have fiefdoms that we're going to need to protect rather than a, a view of the whole city that, uh, that has been the, the history of, of Santa Barbara? I mean, if, if I've got a... You've, you're hearing the, tr the, the talk already about this is my district, you know? not my city, our city. So uh, we're going to have to fight against that because uh, uh, it takes, takes all hands on deck to make this thing work. We can't, it's the modern world. Everything has to be done with a selfie. All right, all right we're talking it, to John Palminteri, Mr. Selfie and an icon of Santa Barbara. KEYT News, he's out tonight. We just heard him say, we're from the press, where's the food? Right. What's that's, your recommendation? That's, a, that's an old term uh, that's used from uh, days gone by. And Jerry, I don't know if you remember days gone by. No, the good thing no, about no, getting older is you forget, you forget days gone by. Uh, but I'm understanding that uh, Kathy Maria is going to have her post-election uh, semi-official results party. That's probably too long of a title at the Super Kukas West Side. Um, Randy Rouse, after great consideration and looking at the list of 400 restaurants in town, has narrowed it down to the Paradise Cafe. Which he happens to own. Which he happens to own. And I asked him if it was an election night party, and he, he said specifically there's a party there every night. So it's going to be hard to, to so determine. So is the press going to have yes. to pay over there? Uh, I think admission's free tonight. Anything over in Montecito, there's still a fee, I think, to get to go down into that, that part of town. Admission fee into Montecito still, I believe, right? So those so, would be your two top those recommendations. Those are two. Uh, well, what are they? Sharon, Sharon, no, Sharon Burns. Sharon Burns at Bo Henry's and Paisano's Pizza on the west side. And uh, Luis is at uh, the Boathouse. All right. Which has a nice happy hour and a great view. Now, are you going to make all those stops? Uh, at a minimum. <laughs> yes, and I'm very ubiquitous. And so I take it that Jim did not order anything for your newsroom? Oh, no, they have plenty of food there. What do they have? Well, whatever they have, it's not exactly where I'm at. I just keep in motion too much. All right. And I've lost some weight recently. Yeah, I see can that see So that I can be ready for election night and the holidays and anything that you uh, invite me to. All right, John. You have a great show. John I'm honored Palmer. to be on the air with you. Well, we're honored to have you on this great channel. This. Thank you, sir. Okay, we're here with Nita Johnson, assistant to the city administrator. Uh, what does it look like turnout for the election? Uh, so far, if we look at all of the ballots that we've received through yesterday, before election day, it's almost 20%. So we're right in line with our previous election two years ago. Which is pretty bad. I mean, 28%. So we're going to have some people getting elected in districts with less than 1,000 votes, it looks like. In some of the districts, it could be close. So, but tonight, we're going to be continuing to receive ballots from the drop-off centers today. So, all of the ballots that we're receiving election day, those votes still, those ballots still aren't counted on the do screen. You, do you think that that makes a case for moving our elections to even even year? I know you're you can't express a political opinion, but wouldn't that wouldn't that boost turnout if we didn't have these off-year elections? No, it's hard to say. Council has, has decided to keep our election year as it is. Okay. Very diplomatic of you, Nina Johnson. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. Now we're with uh, Councilwoman, uh, Council member uh, Kathy Murillo, and she's doing very, very well. Got a two to one lead on Sharon yes. Byrne. Yes. So, what do you think? Uh, I'm proud of the work that I've done uh, campaigning. I didn't take anything for granted, even though I was the incumbent. And uh, I've been walking almost every day since mid-July. I think I missed a total of five days. Like I had a candidates forum or had to rest yeah. or something, what got in my way, right? And, and so that's what you do. You lace up your shoes. I, I wore out a, a pair of flats. 
Okay. I should have brought them and shown yeah, them. You, you know have. how they wear out at the toe and so oh you yeah. Feel, you feel comfortable that you've won now? Yes, sir. Uh, and I'm trying to stay humble about it because you know who knows what the next numbers are going to say. Um, not too many left, though. Not too many left. Right. A 30% turnout. I guess we're going to be happy with that. Um, I'm embracing the district system. I, I haven't been campaigning anywhere else but the West Side, as you know. Um, I still care about San Roque and all you other people on the Mesa, etc. But I got to know my West Side so much better well, and well, got to know the families better. It was wonderful. Let me ask you that, though. I mean, how concerned are you that we're going to lose the council's overall perspective about the city and people are going to be much more narrowly focused on their districts and their parochial interests. Okay, so I only had five forums this time around when I had 17 in 2011. I think Samarkand, Upper East, and the Riviera, those neighborhood associations should have had forums because I'm, I will be making decisions that affect other parts of the city. I think the district system... So you system, think they should have had forums for, for, for candidates? For the West Side districts. candidates, right. But I think they're catching up to the new district system. I think people are getting used to it. Yeah. We got another lousy turnout, pretty much 28, 29 percent, which really, is, what is that? 15 percent of people who are eligible, not not registered. Do you think this is an argument for having even year elections? Absolutely, yeah. Even year elections would bring out more people. I'm not afraid of more people voting. That means I work harder and I convince them that I can do the job. Absolutely. But let me say this about what I learned about my West Side community is that a lot of people vote the day of the election. So I think a lot of votes came in today. Okay. Um, yeah, we were knocking on doors today of people who hadn't voted as of the last tally. And so I know people are uh, got them in today. They really like that traditional American experience sure. of going into the booth and yeah. yeah, and they want to hand it to a person. I would never put my ballot in a mailbox. No offense to the US Postal Service. But do you know what I'm saying? There goes my vote where? No, I have to hand it to somebody or see it go into the machine. All right. Yeah. Kathy Moreno, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Go you. off to Las Cucas and the, Super and the, Cucas. Super Cucas and uh, Taco the, Bar. The Taco Bar. All right, yeah. We'll see you over there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now we got uh, former Mayor Hal Conklin. Thanks for uh, to speaking with us. Happy to do so. How concerned are you with the new district system that we're going to lose on the council the perspective of citywide concerns and people are going to be more focused on district and parochial concerns? Well, you know, Santa Barbara over its history has flip-flopped four times. And uh, I came to Santa Barbara just the last time it flipped from districts to general elections. and. I have to say, watching it all these years, that there isn't much difference between either system. Both systems tend to become parochial after a while, really parochial, and people get really tired of it. And uh, my guess is that the pendulum will swing 30 or 40 years from now, and people get really tired of this and don't want to go to general elections again. So you don't see a big difference in uh, how this no, is going to work? No, I don't see one saving the city and the other not saving the city. It's just that they're just they're both good, but they're both different. and. And you'll see right away that people will start to become very interested in very local issues. The different, the thing that really holds the city to feet to the fire to see a citywide interest is really the citizens group. City councils tend to be followers, not the leaders in that argument. So as long as the citizenry stays focused on citywide issues, the council will follow along. All right. And what about the additional representation of Latinos in the in the city, which is why we went well, to the I, district system? I think system. that uh, you know time will tell. I think this is uh, you know um, certainly an increase just by this election tonight so far, um, but um, time will tell. It, it's, uh, it's it's still uh, early to know what the, the proof's always in the pudding. You know, it's like people people can get elected by their name. But in the end, they got to produce. Yeah. So yeah. we'll see what happens. Speaking of producing, what about the rumors you're going to run for mayor? I've heard them. <laughs> <laughs> and you haven't ruled it out. Uh, no, I haven't ruled it out. So you're considering it? Uh, very seriously. Okay. All right. Thanks very much, Hal Conklin. Okay. And now we're here with uh, Councilman Randy Rouse in the Paradise. 
who has just been overwhelmingly reelected from District 2. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And uh, how different was it for you to campaign with districts and citywide? Well, clearly it's easier to campaign the district because you've got a small area, and when you live in the district as long as I have, those are your neighbors and your friends, and my kids went to school there, so it's not it's not a big mystery to you. I do, inf I do actually, though, miss, even though it was a bigger effort, going around to the rest of the town because the rest of the town still has a very vested interest in what we do. And I know people from the Upper East and the Lower East and from the San Roque and the Upper upper Santa Barbara still really care about what's happen happening in Santa Barbara. So I'm, I'm still not very comfortable with the whole district idea, but uh, it worked out. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously it worked out for you. But, yeah. I mean, you've been a prag pragmatist uh, on mm -hmm. the council, uh, looking out for business as well as the community interest. How concerned are you that that is going to happen, that the... Uh, the new council is going to be much more focused on sort of smaller parochial issues than the, the, the welfare of the city altogether. I'll be honest with you, Jerry. I think that the, the smaller parochial interests were part of the, the campaign and part of the district election thing. When we get in that building over there, I think there's going to be seven people rowing towards the same shore with the same, with the same budget, the same police department, same parks and rec. We're all going to have the same ideas in mind. I think that there will be voices for the neighborhood there's nothing wrong with that I, you know, listening to your neighbors is the way to go that's what's good about this job is listening to your neighbors but i don't think we're going to i don't think we're going to divide into six six parcels I, I really don't all right congratulations again thank you, randy appreciate it thank you all right thanks for coming by we said earlier he's the hardest working man in show business there goes nick welsh pedaling off to another party All right, we're here with Jason Dominguez, who has uh, apparently uh, won a big upset, won by a lot here in District 1. And it's uh, we're at El Bahio, which uh, is a significant place in this whole election. Congratulations. Uh, why do you think you did so well? I think I had a, an amazing team of volunteers and a very engaged community. People really focused on the issues, and they were really engaged, and at the end of the day, they looked at my background and they felt this would be something that could help on the city council. And uh, one of your opponents was at strong backing from uh, the Democratic Party, from Labor. Uh, everybody thought uh, she would run a lot better. What about your message that you put out enabled you to uh, beat her so badly? Um, I think having experience in public safety, which is half of what the city deals with between fire and police, that's half the general fund budget. I think having several years working with the district attorney, with the city attorney, having worked at the United Nations in genocide prosecution, people thought that would contribute to me being a successful council member, especially with the issues we have now with the police, needing a new police station, we're going to have a new police chief. I think that was the kind of leadership people were looking forward to. And do you think that this is going to make the council more moderate, more conservative, more pro-business? Um, I don't think it, it really works out that way. I think what it adds is a public safety and an attorney to the council to kind of match other council members' experience and backgrounds. I don't really believe in labels and political ideologies at the city level. That happens a lot more in Sacramento and D.C. Yeah. What about the significance of where we are at El Bahio, which was the scene of a very controversial protest about uh, over uh, city business district here, and uh, a lot of uh, progressives you know, really demonstrated it was quite, uh, quite controversial. Why, why, why are you here? We came here because Santos Guzman makes amazing Mexican food, <laughs> right. and it was. Uh, no, Santos has been a great businessman and a great uh, patron of nonprofits here on the east side. So he's been a, a great friend to a lot of the communities. So I was really honored and pleased that he was willing to host our celebration tonight. We have this great band, so it's a great event, and lots of people from the community yeah. are happy to be here. A lot of excitement here. Congratulations, Jason Dominguez. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we're here with Mayor Helene Schneider now. Uh, you surprised that Jason Dominguez won and won so big? I, he worked hard, you know. I kept hearing he was everywhere. I heard that he knocked on every door at least twice, so pays off. And uh, how does this affect the council in terms of 
uh, where it's going to be positioned politically. Does it push it a little more to the center or to the right? I, you know, it's hard to say. So much about this election had to do with some micro issues within the district. The macro stuff, I don't know. And um, I look forward to working with Jason. And, you know, I think I think what the east side needs now is a little healing. And I hope that in this role, if he's the district representative now for the east side, that he can present some leadership on all the different issues that are happening here on Milpa Street and the east side that can move that along. And I, and I hope I can help him out in any which way I can. How concerned are you that having a three members now elected from districts is going to change the perspective of the council overall and be less focused on the city uh, as a whole and right. more on more uh, uh, micro issues. Well, there's going to be a transition, and the next couple of years will certainly tell how much focus there'll be on the, like I said, the micro issues. We're still in a drought. We still have issues dealing with big, um, dealing with homelessness, dealing with just general infrastructure. There's big city issues to talk about, and they're all going to have their own say in it. And I think that's going to make a big difference about how, how are you going to be able to do both? Because you have to remember, you might be the, the representative of your district, but you need at least three other people, sometimes four, to get what you need on a vote. So that's going to mean working together with everyone throughout the city and listening to everyone throughout the city. And you must be pleased about Jason's uh, victory for another reason, which is the Democratic establishment uh, was really unified against them behind another candidate. Uh, you're running as an insurgent in the uh, congressional race against that establishment. Uh, does that give you more, uh, does that make you more optimistic about your run? You know, this race was about the city council race. Andrea is a lovely woman. Um, I like her personally. I have no idea what to expect in this race. This, this was the first time district elections happened. Um, you know, the congressional race is a whole other kettle of fish, and uh, I really hope we have a chance to have debates on that race where we can really talk about the issues, and I look forward to that. But but tonight is is a city council race. This is this is about district elections. This is about who is in each district, and Jason's the newest member. Well, we look forward to having you on our next Newsmakers uh, for an interview to hear more about the, the congressional race and uh, your view on that. Thanks very much, Mary Eileen Schneider. Thank you. All right, now I'm, I'm here with our field producer, Angelina De Pasquale, and we're, uh, I think we've hit the jackpot here in terms of the food. This is certainly the best we've seen. We got some uh, quesadillas and some uh, uh, really good guacamole beans. What's your opinion? Quesadillas are good. The salsa is on fire. I literally burned my mouth. You did? <laughs> Now, are there any drinks here to take care of that? Or I haven't yes. seen any. Oh, just water. Water right there. Now, you're from Atlantic City. I am. Now, uh, how does this compare to the quesadillas and guacamole in Atlantic City? Um, quesadillas are a lot better here. I can only really compare to one Mexican place in New Jersey that compares to out here. Um, so especially chicken quesadillas. Chicken quesadillas are what's good. <laughs> All right, there you have it. The inside scoop. The big winner tonight, Jason Dominguez, both uh, in terms of the election and also in terms of the food. Okay, we're at Super Cooch's where uh, uh, Kathy Murillo is celebrating her victory. We got here a little late uh, for the taco bar, uh, although our cameraman was scraping something together. So <laughs> the highlight of the food here really is the tres leches cake. What do you, th what do you think, Angelina? Pretty good. It's got a lot of flavor. Strawberry, fresh fruit in it. Pretty good. Yeah, it's kind of, it's very healthy, I think. Very, very low carb. <laughs> However, I do want to point out one thing. The little flags that they stuck in it have only 45 uh, stars. So I'm not sure what that means, but with district elections, it could be significant. So uh, that's about it from here. Uh, thanks a lot. <laughs> so we're going to leave it here at Super Cucas at the celebration for the re-election of Council Member Kathy Murillo. Uh, also tonight, uh, Council Member Randy Rouse elected. And in the big uh, surprise and upset, uh, Jason Dominguez in District 1 uh, really won a dominant victory, also won a huge victory in terms of the food, 
uh, that, we, uh, that we found tonight. Um, so an interesting night altogether. And the big question remains, uh, which will have to be answered, will the district election system change City Hall so that our council begins to look more at parochial small micro issues rather than the welfare of the city altogether? And we'll have more on that on Newsmakers and also City Desk uh, as we begin to learn more. Thanks a lot. Good night.